Welcome to, to, uh, to this part of the lecture. In our last video, we did um, talk about some mechanisms. We discussed electrophilic substitution. We discussed uh, nucleophilic substitution uh, by molecular and unimolecular. Now, in, we are going to go further to talk about um, addition reactions and elimination reactions. So I think um, we are on the best way to go because we have already explained everything from the introduction. We have an introduction uh, of into reaction mechanisms, and even in the in the latter part of the video after the introduction, I did throw more light on some stuff which you had to know about um, reaction reagents, reactions, and reaction mechanisms. So we are going to go straight to what we call addition reactions, okay? Addition reactions. Addition reactions. Now when they talk about addition reactions, remember we said substitution. You were trying, uh, what you were doing was you, were, you took an atom or group of atoms and then you replace another group of atoms or group of atoms in an organic molecule. That's what we mean by substitution. Now in addition, you are actually bringing two molecules together, all right? So you have a reagent which acts across a double bond, okay? So an atom or group of atoms acts across a double bond in an organic compound to form a single molecule, okay? So addition, it has to be, the compound, of course, usually have multiple bonds. And here we're going to have also, we also have, uh, as I said in the introduction, we have addition, um, uh, a free radical addition reaction, we have electrophilic addition reaction, and we have a nucleophilic addition reaction. Now, I'll start with free radical addition reaction. Uh, the mechanism is not required for you, so it is very simple. For example, you have benzene, okay? Benzene plus 3 chlorine in UV light, 3 chlorine molecules in UV light is going to yield 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hexachlorohexene, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, hexachlorohexane. So that is the name of this compound. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, hexachlorohexane. And of course, it is an explosive reaction. That's an example of a free radical addition reaction. But um, for the mechanism, is as I said, it's not required for you. So we'll go straight to the ones that... You just need to know an example. And this is an example here, free radical addition. And so uh, we are going to go straight to... Uh, electrophilic addition reaction. We have several types of reactions then. Okay? Now, for electrophilic addition reaction, we have an example is going to be reaction of uh, ethene and uh, bromine. Okay? To give us CH2Br CH2 we are all right so we have one two dibromo again one two dibromo again and this takes place you can put it in or you can carry out this reaction in the chloro methane solvent okay the chloro methane solvent is a solvent okay an inert solvent meaning that it does not react with those two it's just this region in which the reaction takes place and this um, the chloro methane here uh, we have to use the carry out this reaction in that. Why are we carrying out the reaction in that? Because bromine can actually be um, uh, hemolyzed. Okay, they can actually be hemolysis of the bromine atom to form bromine radicals, and it is not more going to be um, a, an electrophilic addition reaction. It will be something else. Okay. So for the mechanism, what we have for the mechanism, we are going to have the first thing is going to be CH3. Double bond CH2. I always told you that uh, um, bonds always leave from or arrows leave from electron leaves to electron deficient side. Now remember that this bromine atom, okay, and this one, they are all the same. They have the same electronegativities. And so if they have the same ele electronegativities, it means that there is no, no, none of them is going to be pulling electrons from the other. The electrons are equally shared. And now what happens is that when they approach this bond, when they approach the double bond, all right. When I approach the double bond, there is going to be polarization of the bromine to bromine bond. 
Okay, so what happens if there is a polarization? It means that this one now, which is closer to the bomb, become partially positive. Okay, because yeah, electrons are okay, ele the electrons are very close to it. Okay, so there's going to be polarization. The, this one will become partially positive, and this one will be partially negative because the electrons here will be repelling the electrons which are found in this bond here, and they will move towards this one. So this one becomes partially negative. And now, since it becomes partially, this bromine is going to broke up as bromine plus, and the other one will broke up as bromine minus. So uh, all the electrons which are here are going to be given to this other bromine atom here. Now to, to give us Br minus. Now when it gives Br plus, so this bromine plus here will attach one of the carbon atoms. Sorry, this is CH2. So I'm going to have CH2, okay, Br will attach, and I'm going to have CH2 plus, alright, I'm going to have a carbocation come on one of those carbon atoms. And since there is a carbocation here, remember we have um, a bromine, we have Remember, we have we are going to have a bromine minus in solution. So the bromine minus in solution is going to remember, as I told you, atoms leave from electron leaf to electron division. So this bromine minus is reaching electrons, while this carbon atom is reaching electrons. So you are going to have the attraction of the bromine towards this carbon atom, and it's going to attach to it to give us CH two Br uh, CH two Br. And it's going to give us one to dibromo dibromo ethane. That's an example of an electrophilic substitution. Uh, sorry, electrophilic addition reaction. We call it electrophilic addition because um, the nuclear uh, sorry the electrophile acts across the double bond first. Okay, it is the electrophile that launches the attack first. Okay, that's the reagent that launches the attack first, and so that's what we call it electrophilic addition. All right. Now, other examples of electrophilic addition can include. Uh, and include the reactions between arkins and hydrogen halides. Very common examples. Okay, so I think we can move on. Okay, now. Let's look at the reaction of CH3, CH uh, double bond, CH2, that is propene plus hydrogen bromide, for example. Of course, remember it is uh, under atomic temperature. You give me CH3, CH, um, so, uh, CHBR, CH3, okay, plus, remember, I just want to really explain something to you. That is the reason why I am putting all of this. Plus CH3 uh, or so CH2, CH2, BR. All right. Now, when you carry out this reaction at room temperature, this one is the major product. This one is going to be the major product. That is two bromo propane. The secondary product is going to be the major product, and this primary product is going to be the minor product. We are going to see why. So this will give ninety percent yield. And this one will be 10% yield. Okay, this one will be 90%, and this one is going to be 10%. So this one is a major product, while this one is a minor product. Why do we term it major or we term it minor? It is due to the fact that it, the addition of this HBR to this is supposed to follow Makonikov's rule. And the product which is formed by following Makonikov's rule is called a major product, and the one which is following anti Makonikov's rule. Is called the minor product. Following from here, according to McConnell rule, okay, it, it, it says that on addition of an unsymmetrical reagent HX, why do we mean by unsymmetrical? It means that this group should not be the same like this one. So hydrogen and hydrogen is, uh, is symmetrical because on both sides of this bond we have the same groups. Um, CH2, CH2 is, uh, is a, a symmetrical alkene because on both sides of the double bond I have the same groups. Okay, two uh, 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 the two in is a symmetrical alkene because on both sides of the double bond you have the same. Group. So, but now if I have something like HOH, like water, so the addition of water to an alkene also follows my conical rule because water can be turned into H and OH. So we are going to have HBr for example. So it means that these two groups should not be so on addition of an unsymmetrical reagent HX. 
to an unsymmetrical alkene. This is an example of an unsymmetrical alkene. On both sides of the double bond here, we have um, an ethyl group, and this way we are having melanotin. So we have um, on addition of an unsymmetrical reagent, HX, to an unsymmetrical alkene, the hydrogen atom of HX bonds to the carbon atom of the double bond with the highest number of hydrogen atoms. Okay, so the carbon atom that has of which of the double bond please you must always put it in that of the double bond because if you don't put it there and say the carbon atom with the highest number of hydrogen atoms or, or, or the hydrogen will be attached to the carbon atom of the uh, sorry the carbon atom with the highest number of hydrogen atoms is not going to be true because here the carbon atom with the highest number of hydrogen atoms is CH3. Okay, but we have to specify that it is the carbon atom of the double bond. Okay, we have to specify it that is the carbon atom of the double bond. So we have that, and of course, if it does like that, so if hydrogen atom attaches, it means that the other attach, and so we're going to have this, the secondary product. But if it is, uh, and if, if it does not follow that room, and this hydrogen rather attaches to this other carbon atom, we're going to have this other minor product here, and we call that one anti maconicals because it is not actually maconicals room. Okay? So I'm going to write out the mechanisms, or right? I'm going to write out the mechanisms, and you're going to see how this one is being formed and this one is, being, and I'll explain why they usually actually, uh, what they usually actually exam to explain. They usually ask to explain something like, what is your choice for the major product? Okay. But if you are asking the exam to write an equation for the reaction of HBr and uh, this, okay, and and um, and propane, and propene, okay, if you ask to write. A reaction between propene and HBr, you are, are, you are if they are not asking to give the minor or the major product, please you don't have to mention it. Sim just simply give one single product, okay? Simply give one product, single product. That's what they want. But when they start telling you that you should identify the major product and the minor product, you have to put the two of them, ninety percent and ten percent, okay, for this one. And again, they usually ask you a question like. Um, what accounts for their stability? Okay, they usually ask what accounts for their stab the stability of the major product. Okay, we are going to see that when we do the mechanism. And then uh, at times too, they will also um, ask you that how can you be able to obtain a pure, just pure, uh, a pure sample of the minor product from this reaction? Okay, you do that using an organic peroxide. It means that if I don't want to obtain the major product, I want just to obtain just the, I want to obtain just the minor product. I'll use an organic peroxide. Organic peroxide. Okay. An example is a benzoyl peroxide. An example is benzoyl peroxide. So I can use benzoyl peroxide in that equation. And if I use benzoyl peroxide at a room temperature, I'm going to obtain all my uh, product is going to be the minor one. Okay. And there will be no major product there. So let's look at the, mecha uh, the mechanism. So we have the mechanism here. Okay, I have CH3, um, CH double bond, CH2, the same thing. Hydrogen now is different from that of the HBr, okay, or oh, sorry, from the two uh, bromine. So here I have um, H bonded to Br. Normally, hydrogen is partially positive and bromine is partially negative. So by the time there is attraction of hydrogen, so hydrogen is an electrophile. It add across the double bond pair. That's what we call it electrophilic addition. Okay, so the, the electrons which are here are going to be transferred all to the bromide ion, and we are going to obtain CH two. Sorry, CH three, CH um, plus. Okay, CH plus um, CH three because according to my chemical, the hydrogen atom of HX bonds to the carbon atom of the double bond with the highest number of hydrogen atoms, and so this one can. Now be converted to um, CH3, CHBr, CH3. Okay, and remember it is as a result of that bromine. Okay, this Br minus here will be attracted towards this carbon atom. And so if there is attraction, they are going to bond to the carbon atom to form two, met, uh, two bromo uh, propane. Okay, that is following uh, Makonikov's rule. Now, what about the anti? If you are following anti macronicles rule, you are going. It is going to lead you to the uh, the minor product, and so it is going to be CH two. The mechanism is the same except for a few things. So you have CH two plus H partial positive um, bonded to Br partial negative. So the electrons from here 
or we transfer to the bromine when this um, when the, uh, uh, the, the, the the electrons here oh, sorry when hydrogen launches the attack so now what happens is that we are going to have CH3 CH2 so it doesn't follow Marconic up it rather follows the anti Marconic up so the hydrogen atom of HX is rather bonding to the carbon atom of the double bond with the lowest number of hydrogen atoms so we are going to have CH2 here so we CH and then the cation here or the carbocation is going to be formed on the first carbon atom okay it will be formed on the first carbon atom and then it can now be converted to CH3 CH2 um, CH2 Br by the Br minus which is in solution which is going to be attracted towards this carbon atom and so when it attracted there it is going to bond there and then it's going to form one bromopropane now they usually ask you why what why why is uh, why is it that this one is your choice for the major product why do you choose this one to be the major product now that's why i said we must look at the mechanism before you understand it better now this one is a second carbocation remember it is because the carbocation here is this carbon atom which carries a positive charge is directly bonded to two other carbon atoms so we call it a primary sorry a secondary carbocation and here the carbon atom which carries the positive charge is bonded directly just to one carbon atom so we call it um, a primary carbocation now in order tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations which are in turn more stable than primary carbocations so your yeah, explanation for this one being the major product is that the formation of this a major product of 2 bromopropane is going to pass through or if it was a 2 chloropropane or whatever you say it passes through the stage of a secondary carbocation okay which is more stable than the primary carbocation of the minor product okay so the secondary it passes through a stage okay where you have the major product uh, sorry, uh, it passes through a stage of a secondary carbocation which is more stable than the primary carbocation of the primary product so that is your explanation there and that one explains electrophilic um, I think I've explained about two reasons uh, concerning electrophilic addition but now I cannot just um, explain electrophilic addition to you uh, uh, with this one without talking about Marconi Corpstrom so I've actually explained a lot of things here I've talked about Marconi Corpstrom I have talked about anti Marconi Corps, okay and I've discussed um, how why is this one the major product and this one is the minor product i've also told you when if you want to obtain a pure sample of just the primary product what you do i say you add organic peroxide and example is uh, is benzoyl peroxide okay so that those are some of the points that i just explained there now we are going to wipe and continue okay we're going to wipe and continue into uh, nucleophilic addition reactions Now, nucleophilic addition reactions are very, very common. Okay, where you see it is with aldehydes and ketones, that's the carbonyl compounds. And here, usually the most common reaction we use is CH3, C double bond OH, okay, ethanol plus HCN, all right? Or, or, or you can just write plus HCN at 25 degrees Celsius, or you write um, a cyanide, you can use a metal cyanide, maybe say potassium cyanide or High, uh, or, um, or sodium cyanide, okay, in the presence of concentrated um, sulfuric acid, H2SO4. So, this mixture is going to use hydrogen cyanide. Now, the reason is we don't uh, use hydrogen cyanide directly, hydrogen cyanide is poisonous and so it cannot be stored. So, we generate it in situ by adding a metal cyanide and, uh, and sulfuric acid. So, it's going to use the hydrogen cyanide, and this takes place at 25 degrees Celsius, or you just say RTP, okay. I was going to obtain CH3, um, C, CN, alright, CH, OH, alright, so I'm going to obtain this 2 hydroxy propane nitrile. Okay, we are going to obtain 2 hydroxy propane nitrile. Now, what is the mechanism? What is the mechanism? I'm going to have the first thing is that I have CH3, C double bond O, H, 
okay and i have hydrogen cyanide so this mixture is the hydrogen cyanide and hydrogen cyanide is more electronegative than hydrogen so hydrogen is forming a partial positive and cyanide is forming a partial negative since it's more electronegative, uh, electronegative than hydrogen and it pulls electrons towards itself but now one very important thing you have to know is that remember that electrons from here are being pulled towards uh, the oxygen here is pulling electrons more towards itself okay and so this carbon atom here is going to be having a partial positive center around it all right it's going to have a partial positive center around it that is why it's going to be attacked by nucleophiles okay because the nucleophile will only be attracted to a, to a place where is of course negatively charged so it should be attracted to a place where you have at least some empty space or like maybe uh, something attracting like a positive charge so remember arrows lead from electron leads to electron deficient positively charged electron deficient and negatively charged electron leads so the cyanide is going to attack this carbon atom here why is it so so during this attack what happens is that this bond here breaks okay the bond here breaks uh, that's a relative fusion and the electrons are going to move to the cyanide alone to form cn minus why hydrogen goes as hydrogen plus so this cyanide attacks this carbon atom here and attaches to it now when it attacks, it attacks and attaches to it it is going to form um, ch3 okay C um, cn all right the hydrogen there is intact now one thing you want to ask yourself is Remember, this carbon atom is bonded to this other carbon atom, bonded to hydrogen, and then these two other bonds making four. So, by the time cyanide bonds to it, it makes five bonds. So, it means that one of its weakest bonds has to go away because it cannot maintain pentavalency. And so, this electron, this electron which are found in this uh, bond here, are going to be moved to oxygen. So, there is going to be a, 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 a mesomeric effect, okay? There will be shifting of the, uh, the electron pair in the, in the multiple bond to oxygen. And so, if there is a shifting, they are going to have oxygen here which is negatively charged or you can either indicate it like this okay or you indicate it as O minus so it's going to be negatively charged like that now once it's negatively charged what we have in solution is we have H plus okay we have the H plus that is coming from um, the, the heterolytic fission of hydrogen cyanide so this O minus here remember O minus is electron rich H plus is electron deficient so you'll be attracted towards the O minus, okay, to form. Um, let me do like this, okay, to form CH3, COH, okay, CN, hydrogen. All right, and that is all about the mechanism for um, nucleophilic addition reaction. All right, for nucleophilic addition reaction, that is all. That is all about it. So the cyanide attacks, attaches to it, the electrons here are should be shifted to oxygen and I'm going to obtain this between. From here, the hydrogen plus is being attracted to form that. And that's all about the reaction mechanism. Okay? That's all about the reaction mechanism. Alright. Now, lastly, um, concerning the action mechanisms, we are going to look at um, elimination. All right, elimination, elimination reaction. Now, for elimination, we have two types of mechanisms. We have the elimination in molecular and the elimination by molecular. Now, I'm going to save. I'm going to save. Um, I'm going to save it here. Then we are going to continue in the next video. Now, in the next lecture, I'm going to explain electrophilic addition reaction, uh, sorry, uh, electrophilic, uh, 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 sorry, elimination reaction. I will explain uh, bimolecular and unimolecular. And then from there, I will now get into another thing, the synthetic goods. All right, I will try to give you one or two synthetic goods, and then we we'll saw some few examples. So, see you in the next video. Uh, remember to subscribe and like, and also you should be able to share to your friends that are. Uh, not aware of the channel. Thank you very much.